If you uh, watch the world the way I do, you see that uh, many companies in the consumer side have been really hyped lately, you know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, on, on and on. But I see a similar problem happening inside the, the, inside the enterprise, where all this data that we're using on cloud services, whether it be Box.net or, or even SharePoint, they're holding all of our data and it's really hard to join that together into an intelligence system that helps us run our businesses. And Elastic Intelligence has a new cloud-based SQL, as a new cloud system that lets us do SQL uh, queries on that. And it's really interesting for business. We're gonna hear about it right now. Who are you? Well, my name is Roger Sippel. I'm the CEO of Elastic Intelligence, and we provide the Connection Cloud. And my background is all about databases. Uh, some people who are as old as I am know of me as the founder of Informix back in 1980. And so I pioneered uh, SQL databases along with uh, several other folks. And that was uh, a great time, great successful type of product. And it's now a great pleasure to bring that same kind of technology SQL database technology to the cloud so that people can query their data even though it's spread all over the world. I think this is really exciting. Uh, um, I'm seeing a lot of stuff happen in the world. I mean, the company that was just here before you showed me a new contextual photo thing and they're joining databases together mm -hmm. and adding value. And so systems like yours that let me join databases together, let me add value to where I work, right? And um, Tell me, what kinds of databases can you join together? Can you join together all these cloud databases like Box.net and Google Spreadsheets? Or Yes, uh, we can. So we're building out the Connection Cloud. Uh, we're starting off with connectors for things like Salesforce and NetSuite, uh, the Zawara billing system, the Intact accounting system. We've also built a, a toolkit so others can build connectors as well. And so system integrators are joining us now and, and even people that just want to liberate whatever data they've got but uh, we have a liberator for Google Spreadsheet. So for example, you can write a query that, uh, well, first of all, you can write a query that goes to, to say your intact uh, accounting system and runs a report on your intact accounting system. You can use your favorite report writer for this because the Connection Cloud is a ODBC and JDBC driver. But moreover, you can also join data together as you were referring to. So let's say you have some data in Salesforce about your customers, but you have information in intact about what they bought from you or whether those shipments have arrived yet. So you might want to be able to run a query, tell me about all my customers that I'm planning to close a deal for over $100,000 with this quarter and let me know whether their shipments of stuff they've already ordered has arrived yet. Yeah. So that will require uh, hitting both those systems. And that's what we do. The Connection Cloud lets you build uh, tables, virtual tables, and uh, joins of tables together. And so you can get at that data with your favorite tool. So you're almost like a new SDK for the enterprise. Uh, well, we are the uh, ultimate SDK in that we conform to standards that uh, took 30, 40 years to build. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm so excited about this company because it's the culmination of my whole career, really, of standardizing uh, the database concept around the relational database, the SQL database, and then the ODBC and JDBC technology. So you can send the connection cloud and SQL statement from any of those on ramps, if you will. And you can write a PHP program or a Ruby program or you can use Crystal Reports or Tableau or Jaspersoft or Excel spreadsheets that they can do queries of SQL databases. So we mimic an SQL database. We're a virtual SQL database. We're not really an SQL database, but we'll take that SQL query and we'll go get that data from those cloud data sources. And it's hard to get data from those cloud data sources because they each have their own individual API. You don't have to go get a master's degree in NetSuite or Intact API. You can just treat it as if it's a MySQL sitting on a server down the hall. Do you do this in real time? In other words, if I ask your system something, do you go out to the, all those databases in real time and pull the, the real time data, or do you have to query it and, and index it in your own cloud, cloud database? We go out in real time. So if you've got fast moving data, uh, yeah. particularly like in Salesforce or something like that, especially when you get toward the end of the quarter, <laughs> you're collaborating with a lot of coworkers, uh, the data's changing a lot, you might be saying, okay, Give me the list of the top 10 prospects we've got for this quarter uh, and uh, rank them by amount of money that they're worth. Well, that might be changing 
every few minutes as you get into the last few days of the quarter. Oh. Uh, so running that query over and over again, and again, it's from whatever tool you want to use. Uh, maybe the Accelerator Mobile Development Toolkit's been used to build an application, so you may have an application on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever. Uh, but whatever tool you're accustomed to, there's so many tools in the world that talk SQL now. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, it took 20 years, but that 20 years won't be wasted. It, what was hard is to make those tools talk to cloud data. Yeah. That has not been possible until just now. This is really, really interesting. I, I, I bet you know, strategists like Mark Benioff or um, different, different ones who are trying to see trends in business are gonna be really excited, excited about you in a couple of years. Um, for instance, we, we're all getting these phones now, and these phones have notifications that come in. Right. These notifications could be generated by a system like yours, so it tells me something happened in my business, I need to take action. Right. It puts it in, in my notification, just like Facebook puts a notification in my phone right now, right? It says, hey, I gotta take action on, my wife tagged me on a photo, I gotta take action. Business is gonna be run like this in the future. Do you, do you see that kind of use case or? Oh, absolutely. Um, when Apple first came out with Siri, we, we immediately asked them, you know, hey, can we build, a, you have an SDK, can we build an add-on to Siri so that when someone creates a virtual table, maybe called my best opportunities or my best customers or something like that. And if they say, hey, tell me what my best customers are right now. And that would run a query in the connection cloud, it would go to Salesforce, it would maybe have to hit two or three different tables to determine what that salesperson's best customers are right now. Maybe the, he, that salesperson wants to define what he thinks are my best customers wow. or my best opportunities. So uh, the beauty of using a standard like SQL is that we don't have to build all those front ends. We don't have to build Siri. Uh, we don't have to build uh, alert systems. We, because every tool that's been invented during my career always tries to talk to relational databases. And uh, those on-ramps are well known. JDBC, ODBC, probably 90% of what you see in a web page comes through a JDBC driver at some point in the, in the chain from uh, getting a request for a web page and going and collecting that data and making the web page and giving you back an answer. So those standards are very strong, uh, very powerful still. And uh, we also uh, talk to NoSQL databases as well. And the beauty is you can actually send us an SQL query and even though that NoSQL database doesn't talk SQL, so you can't use Tableau or Jaspersoft or some report writer with that data, but if you go through the connection cloud, you can. Yeah. So we translate that, that standard that all those front end tools know to whatever the data source might be, a Google spreadsheet, a big data system, or a Intact or Zuara, what have you. Yeah. Tell me a, a little bit more about your business. How, how, do, how do you sell this? And, and uh, what kinds of customers are you seeing come through your door so far? To well, um, we're just rolling it out now. So what we s see doing is co-marketing with some of our partners. So for example, the Zuara billing system, it's uh, very easy to use the Connection Cloud to get answers from the Zuara billing system by running whatever report writer you want. So we just need to make those users aware that all these different report writers can now be used. So uh, we'll be doing a lot of joint webinars with uh, both companies that have data sources, like Intact and such, and companies like Tableau or Jaspersoft or Yellowfin that have report writing tools. But I, I expect to see that explode. I expect to see uh, when we open source the Liberator Toolkit, people will build Liberator connectors so the connection cloud is hooked up to their data source and we'll get data sources being hooked up that we've never even heard of. Yeah. And similarly, because we have an ODBC driver and a JDBC driver uh, and, and web service calls where people can send us an SQL statement, all sorts of front ends will get hooked up to the connection cloud whether we know about it or not. Yeah. And so we'll just become this uh, invisible switching network, really. So it's free for people that are just you know casually using it, you know, like 30 queries a month or whatever. But uh, then if you're going to make you know, productive business use of it, then yeah, we do have to pay the bills ourselves. So then, then we do have pricing plans for individuals and uh, work groups and enterprises. No, it's really exciting. I, mean, I, you know, I was talking to some guys at the Westin about the future of customer service. And right. as you walk in, you're going to know about, a lot about the Westin because you're going to be wearing these Google glasses. <laughs> and it's going to tell you all about the services there but they're going to know a lot about you, right? right? And you can have a real-time dashboard or an iPad app that says, hey, Robert Scoble just walked in the front door and here's 
You're all right. sorts of different information about him. And what well, wouldn't it be cool if you walk in a room and you see somebody and you go, gosh, I, that, was he a customer of mine? And it recognizes his face and then looks up his name and then goes and looks up everything you ever sold the guy and whether he ever paid his bills in the billing system. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, starting to get data from all over the web. And sure, uh, you know, companies like Google will hook up the common data sources like Twitter or Facebook like that. But we're more about the data that's usually secured behind a password somewhere, right? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's usually more thought of as enterprise data or private data. So it's, it's not data that anybody could just go hit. But of course we can get at that data as well. You can build a liberator for the weather or you know, any government data source of uh, demographics or what have you. Uh, and join that with your Salesforce data. We have customers interested in doing that. But um, to get at the data that you know, you've built, that, that would be your enterprise app. You know, yeah. Instead of Siebel and SAP, it's uh, Salesforce and uh, NetSuite, say. To get at that data, uh, that's what the Connection Cloud's for, and to get at it in an orderly way. Now that's really exciting stuff. Big future for you ahead, because I think more and more companies are going to get this. I, you know, I was trying to uh, prod my friends at Salesforce, what's, what's Benioff's big theme for the next year going to be? And it's, I think it's about notifications, it's about the mm -hmm. smart business. Because social, a social enterprise is one thing, but having a right. smart and social enterprise, a contextual enterprise is really interesting, and you do that. You, you yes, we do, uh, and there'll be lots of companies we'll partner with to make that even, even more. I mean, we have scheduling right now. You can schedule a, a, a query to run every five minutes and email you results and things like that, but there's a lot of companies, there's this little company called If This Then That, and they, yep. they let you build little rules, right? So if uh, Apple goes above uh, you know, 600, then send me an email, but uh, we'll hook up to them, and so you can say, well, uh, you know, if uh, it's the last month of the quarter, uh, every day e email me my top customers. If it's the last two days of the quarter, every five minutes email me my, uh, or, or if this happened, you know, run this query and if uh, my total amount available uh, to close this quarter goes under a million dollars, then you know, send me a notification, to, you know, send me a text message to my iPhone uh, because I've got to go move some more prospects into you know, likely to close. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, you're right. I think the business world uh, will be uh, event driven. I mean, it is by nature, but data doesn't come out and, and bite you in the butt. So, uh, in order to get those mechanisms built, whether it be, you know, glasses that recognize people or uh, a, a Siri request, you know, tell me my top prospects, or uh, some of these if this then that sort of rules or, or you know, dozens of other systems that people will create, uh, they all need some way to get at the data. And, and they can't all go get every SDK for every SaaS application. Yeah. Uh, all of those SDKs come with 100 pages of documentation. You got to get a master's degree in the API of that SaaS application. They can, however, send an SQL statement to the connection cloud. And I think that's what'll happen. Very cool. Tell me just briefly, uh, what's, what's your, how, how old is your company and how is it funded? It's taken us a while to do this. I started funding it uh, myself four years ago and uh, I put in about $3 million and we've raised three and a half million in a, a A1 round. Alsop Louis is uh, our primary venture capitalist. And uh, since I've been around for a little while, that hasn't been a real problem. Uh, I. Uh, did make a decent amount of money on Informix uh, and then Vantiv software and then Visigenic software. We had the first application server and we took all three of those companies public. So I've, I've been down this, oh, thanks, thanks. But you know, it's, it's uh, all about what you're doing now. And I think this is an important thing to do now. So I'm happy to be one of the funders of it. And uh, uh, it's going to be exciting as we bring this to market. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, well, uh, connectioncloud.com is a good place to go. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming and showing it to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.